This is a presentation that I gave for the first time at the Southeast DX Club last, about a year ago. And uh, it started out as a presentation on a product we call the Bev Pro One, which is a unique beverage antenna. And old dog, new tricks, because the beverage antenna has been around since about 1910. Uh, so it's, uh, it's well documented, it's well understood, not by me, but it's well understood uh, uh, the physics and everything on, on why it works. But the Bev Pro One has now evolved into a product we call the Bev Flex 4. The beverage Bev Pro One was a beverage antenna, very unique, reversible, but now uh, Jeff figured out a way to make four different types of antennas out of one kit. A beverage, a beverage on ground, which is an antenna that's on the ground, which is counterintuitive to everything we've ever learned. A inverted EWE and a flag. So with this one kit, you can have any of these four variations of an antenna. And these are receive antennas. And those of you that have been in ham radio for a long time, especially for low frequencies, 160 and 80 meters, a nice high dipole is a great transmit antenna, but you know, I started when I moved up into the mountains, it was nice and quiet. Guys around me were working stations that I couldn't hear. And until I started playing around with loops and beverages and dedicated receive antennas, uh, I simply could not work the DX that the other guys were working. So you can never have too many antennas in your arsenal. And for low frequency DXing, and the DX season is just around the corner, um, these types of antennas, loops, beverages, are things that you're going to need if you want to work a lot of DX. So the Bev Pro 1 has evolved to a Bev Flex 4. This is kind of hard to read, but it's a copy of the, uh, the latest QST, the ad from uh, Pixel Technologies. I think it's page 11 of the August QST. So that's where you can see a little bit more. Uh, his first product was a loop antenna. I was very much involved in, develop, in wor working on a prototype of the loop. And then the BevFlex 4 is a, a kit of four boxes which you can use to make different types of antennas. So the BevFlex 4 can be a classic beverage, a beverage on ground or beverage in sod. Again, counterintuitive to what we think about antennas. An inverted EWE or a flag. And one of the unique things about the antenna is it's made out and made entirely of RG6 cable. RG6 is cheap. You can buy a thousand foot roll of it at Home Depot for like 70 bucks. And it's used for the antenna element as well as the feed lines into the shack. Jim asked me to uh, talk a little bit about and have a slide on how beverages work. My stock answer is they work real well. I'm not into the physics of them. But the basic beverage, and there's a lot of documentation, uh, typically it's a long piece of wire uh, matched at one end to the shack, uh, roughly 450 ohms to 50 ohms, so 9 to 1 match, and terminated at the, at the far end with a, a resistor 4 to 500 ohms. And the uh, direction of the reception is, is that way. Uh, if you leave it unterminated, it's bidirectional. It theoretically reserves, receives equally in both directions. What's different about this beverage antenna is, as I said before, it's all RG6, the antenna and the feed. It's all passive. There's no relays, no remote switches, no DC on the feed line. A couple of other interesting things is the termination resistors, which are normally way out at the end of the antenna are now reflected all the way back to the shack, so you can adjust them in the shack. And the other very interesting thing is you don't need to have it, you don't need to feed it at the end. You can feed it from any point along the length of the antenna. The basic RG6 beverage concept, uh, the shield of the RG6 is actually the antenna. That's the long piece of wire, the shield. So what we're doing is at the far end, instead of having a termination resistance, we reflect, we impedance match and reflect it back using the differential mode of the coax, and then one-to-one -one transform back to the shack, and then put the termination resistance there. So this antenna would be looking that direction. If there's any questions, but please stop me at any time. 
this transformer is approximately 9 to 1. Uh, this one is 9 to 1. This one is 1 to 1. Yes. Yep. You're ahead of me. <laughs> so this concept, take, taking that one step further, we now reflect both ends back. And depending on where, which one is the feed and which one is the termination, you can switch and switch whether it's looking that direction or that direction. Again, using the shield of the coax as the actual antenna and using the, the fact that the coax differential mode can trans for, transmit that signal back and forth. Uh, and RG6 is great because at these frequencies, typically up to 10 megahertz, the losses are insignificant. So some block diagrams. This shows that, uh, again, you have a termination unit, a termination unit at each end. The feed unit can be located anywhere along this length. Two lines of RG6 coming back to the shack, a switch box to switch to which direction. And then here's where we impedance match from 75 ohms to 50 ohms to drive the receiver. Now, there's a lot going on here. It's, it's more than just a couple of transformers and boxes. There's lightning protection. Uh, the transformers have been uh, custom designed and matched. And uh, everything, by the way, is made in the USA. This one's pretty hard to see, but the basic beverage performance versus band. Uh, the thing really doesn't start working as a beverage until you get up around 250, 300 feet. And then you'll see goods and excellence. And um, once you get up to 500 feet, it's excellent performance on 160, 80, 40. And directivity is excellent uh, once you get up about 450, 500 feet. But I have some uh, friends. Um, some of you might know Bill Barr, N4NX, has a uh, summer home up near me. We installed one at his summer home that's, uh, I think, 260 feet long. And it works, works quite well. Jeff, the designer, his antenna is 270 feet long where he lives in Cincinnati, and it, uh, it, it works fairly well. Mine is 800 feet, and it works real well. Uh, mine is about, uh, about as high as I can reach, 8, 10 feet, just high enough to get it away from the, the bears and the deer. <laughs> uh, this is Jeff's predicted pattern for the beverage on a 500-foot antenna for 160 and 80. Uh, 3 dB bandwidth on 160 is about 86 degrees. Front to back is 15 dB. On 80, the bandwidth is, uh, the beam width is about 60 degrees. Front to back is about 20 dB. How critical is that You want to keep it sort of straight. Mine wanders all over the, well, mine might vary 20, 30 degrees just to get around some trees. And it goes up and down. We have some pictures of, of what it actually looks like. So let's talk about the, the beverage on ground. Beverage on ground or beverage in sod has, uh, it's basically the same design, but the impedances are different. It's typically around uh, about 200 ohms instead of 450, and the velocity factor of the, the wire is significantly different than the wire in the air, so the antenna can be electrically longer than it is physically. Uh, so a short beverage on ground works fairly well. Uh, we'll go through some slides here and, and give you an example of how well one works that's only 170 feet long. Uh, the gain is much lower. Uh, typically at least 10 dB lower than a beverage. So you're starting to get to the point where uh, you're getting to the noise floor of your receiver. And once you get above 40 meters, you may need to put a preamp. With a beverage, you don't really need to preamp. But the bog gives you the opportunity to look at uh, putting a, an antenna like this for low noise reception in a small lot. Uh, again, the performance characteristics uh, that Jeff has, uh, you know, you get up around 200 feet, it starts looking good on 80 and 40. Excellent at 80 and 40, good on 160. Even down at 150 feet, it's fair on 160 and good on 80 and 40. 
and uh, fairly good front to back as well. I think he has some patterns here. Yeah, this is 175 foot theoretical pattern for the beverage on ground. You notice it's much, much broader in the front. Uh, almost 100 degrees, front to back is still 15 dB. The other variation, the third variation, is the inverted EWE antenna, which is a piece of wire about 30 or 40 feet long with a vertical drop of about 10 feet on each end to ground. And then we have our termination boxes, the feed point and the two feed lines coming back into the shack. So now you can have a low noise receive antenna with only about 30 to 40 feet of space and only 10 feet above ground. It's not going to work near as good as a, as a full-blown beverage, but it does give the opportunity to, give a, to have a low, uh, low noise receive antenna in a small lot. The inverted EWE, you can see the pattern is starting to get very broad on the front, almost 150 degrees. Still have reasonable front to back, 23 dB. This is 160 meters, and this is for an inverted EWE that's 40 feet long and 10 feet above the ground. The last of the four variations is called a flag antenna. It's a balanced antenna where you have a wire uh, that's typically 30 to 40 feet long, another one, and this whole thing is elevated about 10 feet above ground, and the feed points are in the center, so it's a balanced antenna. You come, again, to the same termination, the feed box, into the shack and do the switching. Uh, I have not personally had any experience with, with the flag, but uh, the guys that have been doing work with it are, you know, like it a lot. And it, again, it gives you a good opportunity to have a, 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 a good receive antenna in a small space. The pattern looks very similar to the inverted EWE. Uh, 3 dB points, about 150 degrees. And this is showing 30 dB plus front to back at 160 meters. For how long? For how long? What do you mean? How, how long an antenna gives 30 dB? 30 feet? This one is this one. He modeled it 34 feet, uh, 34 feet by 16 feet, and 10 feet above ground. So not that big. So all of this information, by the way, is available on uh, the Pixelsat radio website. Pixelsat, in their infinite wisdom, just changed their name of their company to InLogix, or InLogic. I'm not sure even, I even how to pronounce it, um, because they do a lot of business in other markets. But all of this information is on the website, all these patterns, all the white papers, all uh, data sheets, it's all there. So the connection to Pixelset, Jeff and I decided that after doing the initial work, we've both been in manufacturing all our lives. We both want to sort of retire. We didn't want to get into that mode. So we knew the CEO of Pixel. We go back 20 plus years. And uh, so we convinced him to actually do the manufacture in support of the product and we just get a small royalty on the product. Pixel, by the way, is in Denver. Uh, the challenges of this antenna, predictable matching and operation of the reflection boxes, it's not that easy. Isolation to allow feed point flexibility so you can feed it from any point along its length. Designing flexibility and manufacturability. And in the case of the BevFlex 4, designing the end termination units, simply by changing the jumpers, you can have any one of these four variations of antennas, the beverage, the bog, the uh, inverted EWE or the flag. So Jeff, the inventor, WHGNM, Georgia Tech grad, uh, long career in development of broadcast transmission equipment, uh, recently retired as a VP of Advanced Technologies from Harris, and he's a longtime ham and personal friend since the early 60s. Here's two geeks back in Johnstown, Pennsylvania, playing around with uh, I think this was a uh, flying spot scanner TV transmitter that one of us entered into science fair. Found an old QSL card from 
Six meter AM days, 1963, why Jeff gave me a 599 when it was six meter AM, I'm still not sure, but uh, there it is. So the prototype and the development, uh, Jeff lives in Cincinnati on a small lot. Uh, he has antenna restrictions. I live in White County with 14 acres. Uh, Jeff developed the original prototype in 2008 and was encouraged by the results his is 270 feet long and still in service. He also installed a 175-foot beverage on ground at his location on Catawba Island, which is up on the south shore of Lake Erie. Uh, he knew I had all this property, so he convinced me to put up a 500-footer, which I put up in 2009, and I was impressed. And then as he developed, you know, I think we can, we, can make, we can feed this thing anywhere. I said, well, all right, I can extend mine the other direction, another 300 feet, let's do that. So I made mine 800 feet and fed it at the 300 point, 300 foot point. Um, and mine is aimed uh, 60 degrees forward and 240 degrees reverse. So it's perfect for Europe and the South Pacific. Uh, let's take a little tour of uh, where my antenna is. <laughs> when I first started considering a beverage, you know, I looked at the uh, uh, the DX Engineering a reversible beverage that's made out of uh, ladder line. The thought of stringing ladder line through this just didn't appeal a lot. Um, so we'll take a visit to mine, starting at the southwest end, working toward the northeast. The antenna runs sort of in a straight line, not exactly perfect. Uh, it's mounted just about as high as I could reach uh, to allow for what I call bear and deer fades. Uh, the antenna does follow the contour of the land up and down, so the elevation, the overall elevation delta is uh, 150 to 200 feet. I mean, if you read all the purest literature on beverages, they want it perfectly straight line. They want it on wooden posts with insulators, you know, four to six feet above ground. And I guess what I'm trying to say is, try it, and it, you'll be you'll be amazed at how well it works. So this is the. Uh, one end of the termination, that's the RG6 coming down, ground rod. See, it's tied off with uh, cable ties to tree limbs. This is the feed point at the 300 point level. I just put some loops in there for strain relief. Uh, these are the two feeds going to the shack. The shack from this point is about 300 feet. Whoops. There's another shot of the um, midpoint. And I also did a lot of work on the uh, development of the pixel loops, and there's kind of a loop graveyard back there. Um, this is one of the, uh, it was either a bear or a deer fade, so I had to put a splice. And this is the other end. Just comes down and uh, loops around a tree limb and then terminates. This is the feed line running into the shack through just laying on the floor. And in the shack, this is my rig and this is the switch box where I can switch directions of the, of the antenna. So let's take a listen. Jeff uh, made some uh, videos of what a bog w sounds like at his place up on Catawba Island. I've got a couple of slides and these are this is Jeff with the demo. Don't let the sizzle replace the substance. This is WTTF in Tiffin, Ohio. Again, listening from Catawba Island. WTTF uh, in Tiffin, Ohio. It's a 500 watt station. It's about uh, 35 to 38 miles to the southwest of uh, Catawba Island. We are listening on the Bev Pro BOG, beverage on ground antenna that's 174 feet long. And uh, you can now hear the station. It's running about S9. If I uh, switch directions on the antenna and switch to the northeast, station almost disappears. Drops down to about an S4, listening to the northeast. Switching back to the southwest in the favored direction towards Tiffin. Station comes right up to S9+. Plus. And if we switch to a, a low dipole transmit-receive antenna, 
you will hear the signal come up, but uh, there's so much co-channel interference, it's very difficult to copy. You hear several stations at once. You can see the beat frequencies on the S meter between the difference in the carrier frequencies between the co-channel stations. And now we'll switch back to the uh, Bev Pro in the favored direction. Everything clears up nicely. That's the Bev Pro in the favored direction. Back to the dipole antenna. Back to the Bev Pro in the favored direction. And now. There you go, there's the station ID. WTTF. Tiffin, Ohio. And now we'll switch to the uh, northeast, away from the station on the Bev Pro. And as you can hear, the signal drops way down. And back to the favored direction. Nice and clean and clear again. Uh, continuing on, this is WFOB in Fostoria, 42 miles to the southwest. This is listening in the, on the Bev Pro 1 in the southwest favored direction. We'll turn up the audio here a little bit. Okay, so you can see we're just peaking around S9 on the meter. And now we will switch directions to the northeast. Okay, so this is listening towards the northeast. Something greater than a 20 dB front to back ratio. This is listening towards the northeast. Now we'll switch back to the southwest. This is back on the southwest, listening to WFOB in Fostoria. And now we'll switch to the uh, transmit receive dipole antenna. Whoops, let's see here. Okay, there we go. Now we're on the dipole antenna, which is used for both transmitting and receiving. It's pretty much non-directional because it's only about 30 feet above ground level. And we got about an S7. You can hear some co-channel interference. Now we'll switch back to the Bev Pro in the favored direction. There we are on the Bev Pro in the favored direction. And now we're listening off of the uh, northeast or non favored end of the Bev Pro for this station. The station is located southwest of the receiver, back to the southwest direction. WFOB in Fostoria, Ohio, from, listing from Catawba Island. Okay, uh, now we are listening to a Canadian uh, station, CBEF, located in Windsor, Ontario, uh, pretty much straight north. So the beverage antenna is favoring the northeast. We're off to the side a little bit, but uh, we're also in a deep side lobe. As you can hear the station, uh, it's a little weaker, uh, about S4, or S5. Now we'll switch the beverage to the southwest. Okay, now the Bev Pro is switched to the southwest, and you can't hear the station at all. Uh, and now we'll go back to the northeast. And now you can hear the station again. And if we go to the uh, transmit dipole antenna, uh, the signal comes up. The reception in this case is a little bit better because the station is off to the side. But just to demonstrate the front to back ratio, going back to the Bev Pro, as you can see the signal strength has dropped with the beverage on ground, a bog, 174 foot bog as we used with the previous station. About S5, and now we'll switch directions to the southwest. And the station's completely disappeared. We're down below S1, uh, nothing at all. And now we're back to about S4 or S5. So that's some, uh, an idea of what a beverage on ground works, sounds like. And that, that do work. Uh, now we're going to get really dangerous and log into my station up in the mountains. 
what I've got is a TS-870, uh, an oldie but a goodie, a remote control via ham radio, deluxe and Skype. Antenna one is connected to the northeast side and antenna two is connected to the southwest side so we can remotely switch directions from here, we hope. The way I've got this wired, the two feed lines coming in from the antenna go into four-way splitters. Number one, because I want to feed two radios, and number two, I want to give some isolation. And what I've found on my installations is matching, even though you can tweak the termination resistors, right around 75 ohms is, is a pretty good sweet spot. So having it into a 75 ohm splitter as the match that the, that the beverage actually sees is good. So I can really do anything out here without affecting uh, I could do anything on my rig with the switch without affecting what's going on remotely and vice versa. Yeah. Pardon? They're just standard. Yeah, they're spec to only get down to 5 megahertz, but they don't, they don't know that they go lower, so they do. <laughs> uh, I find that they go down easily to 1 megahertz and, and below. Most of them. The key is to get them, you know, use the same, same vendor, same manufacturer. So let's play. Here we go. Let's see. All right. First thing. Here's my QTH. You can barely see the, uh, hard to see up there, but there's a beam right there. The beverage is running down in the woods. And let's, let's pull out a little bit here. See where this is actually located. Well, too far. <laughs> Wait a minute. Where am I going? Okay, that's good. I mean, we're, we're, we're down here somewhere, and I'm up there. So that's where it's at. So the first thing we'll do is call the radio on Skype. Come on. It worked earlier. There we go. Okay, we're connected. Now we'll go to Ham Radio Deluxe. Connect. Canwood 870. Connect. That's good. We're in. Take. Low 60 to 64. 79 degrees on Pete Street Street at 737 with news on the hour. The half and when it breaks. Yeah, turn that to to on Atlanta's exclusive 24 hour news weather. Okay, and so there's uh, news 95.5 and AM WSB. WSB. Depend on it. So if I switch to the northeast, WSB. from up there. See it drop. WSB See the S meter. I'm Chris Taylor in the news center here, continuing. Now we're back on the now, aim, out of the aim toward Atlanta. The of Robin Williams at the age it's still a little early out there. I don't know what it's going to be. WSM Nashville. Pretty dramatic. Uh, let's see. What are some other good ones in the broadcast? Man? 880 is. Uh, CBS at night. Yeah, WCBS 880. Uh, 820 is Dallas. It's probably a little too early for Dallas. WBZ Boston. I don't think that's Boston. I think we still have a bunch of daytime stations on. It's much more dramatic at uh, late at night. 1200 is San Antonio. Can't tell much right now. Uh, let's go up to a little higher in frequency. Let's go up to. Uh, Four years. 
1210 is Philadelphia normally. Not yet. Let's go up to W. Sometimes on WWV it doesn't really show dramatic results because I'm kind of off the side. We'll see what WWV sounds like. Can't even hear it yet. CHU. Yeah, I'm not hearing much of anything. It's 21 AM. So that's CHU Canada off the front. Off the back. Back to the front. There's a fair amount of delay in the S meter readings too, but again, we're early in the evening. Uh, 3485 is an airport beacon. New York radio. Put one upper side band. 7,000 scattered. Seeing one 2,000 broken. So that's aimed at the northeast. Broken. Washington, Dulles. From 0000. zero, 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 zero. Southwest. Zero zero at nine air. Visibility more than six. Light rain showers. Ceiling six thousand overtime. So going from, from an S zero six zero zero zero. S four ish down to. Visibility more than six. You know, S one S two. Let's go to five meg WWV. On AM. Man, propagation is really horrible tonight. There's WWV to the west. It's off the front, off going to the northeast, it's gone. Go up to CHU at a higher frequency, 78. 50. And now the S meter caught up. S6, S8. Switched off the back. It's not showing much difference tonight. Oh wait, I didn't switch. There you can see it. Again, the, the uh, propagation changes. Sometimes, you know, sometimes it's different. That's toward the station. That's away from the station. Ten Meg WWV. That's, that's toward the west. That's toward the east. At the tone, twenty three hours. 44 minutes, coordinated universal time. This is one of my favorite ones. Uh, Wind one four New York radio, niner, sometimes Gander radio. One zero, Q cloud at 5,500, 7,500 scattered. Ceiling one three thousand broken. Two S three S four off the back. Temperature two six. Dew point one five. Altimeter three zero zero. S seven S eight off the front. Washington Dulles. 
Let's see if there's any uh, ham activity. WW or uh, W1AW. Ah, not down there. Eighteen. WWV or W1AW code practice. No. No, there's no, it's not resonant. Yep. So there you can see the directivity on 160. That's off the back, that's off the front. Doesn't make any difference. No, as long as that's that's the beauty of the way all the transformers and everything are designed, manufactured. It, theoretically, it doesn't make any difference, and I can't see it. So, so if we go up to 80 meters, 35, 81.5. W1AW again. Okay, that's off the back. A lot of fading tonight. the back it's S0, you know, static is getting in there. Off the front S4. Go up to 40 meters. 7047. Front. That's off the back. Switch back to the front. A lot of fading. So that's that's about it. Anybody have a favorite frequency, John? Yeah, tree limbs and cable ties. <laughs> Nothing fancier than that. I started out thinking about insulators and all the fancy stuff. No, you don't. The high, you, there's, a, there's a sweet spot like four to ten feet above ground. If you get much higher than that, you're going to pick up a lot of noise, a lot more atmospheric noise. You get much lower, the impedance is not going to match into the, the beverage configuration. You'd have to go to the bob, bog configuration. Anybody have a favorite frequency? Want to try something? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I could reach, mine is about this high. Just so what's that, eight feet? Let me turn this thing down so I can hear you guys. Does anybody want to try a different frequency before you start? 7285? Of course, we want to go to sideband. Nobody there. Anybody else? Fourteen. This thing doesn't. You know, once you get above thirty meters, it's uh, 
The short ones work great at 20 meters and above, but the longer, it, the, we could try it. Let's see, let's see what it does. 14 what? 300 even? That's not those crazy guys, is it? That's 313. Okay, that's northeast. Typically, yeah, the long ones work much better below uh, 30 meters. Uh, the short ones, uh, Bill Barr, N4NX, he uses his a lot on 20. He says he hears stuff on the beverage that he cannot hear on a dipole up on the mountains. But I've, I've got a uh, you know, full-size beam for 20 meters and above, so I, I don't have any need to use this. Noise is not a problem. Noise is really a problem once you get you know, 40 meters, 80 meters, 160 meters. What time is it? It is 10 to 8. 4755, five, five. okay. 47550, five, upper. Silence. Which net is that? Oh, okay. Anybody else while we're waiting for that one? Any other frequencies? Seven seventy WABC. That's usually a good one when the uh, a little later in the evening. Get it back on AM. It usually barrels in after about nine o'clock at night. Pardon? Yeah. That's off the front. Hear a difference. Actually, you're hearing a totally different station off the back. Fairfax, Virginia, the great WMAL. Go right ahead, sir. Hey, Mark, pleasure to speak to you. Two totally different stations. Anybody else? Oh, okay. I, I really didn't want to make this into a sales pitch, but uh, the uh, the kit sells for three ninety nine. That gets you all four of the boxes. You have to supply the RG six. His loop, I think, sells for four ninety nine. So, uh, and the loop is a great antenna if. If your main issue is you're in a small a subdivision, you've got a lot of man-made noise, neighbors with plasma TVs, the loop is a good antenna because you can null that noise out. But it is bi-directional. Uh, I have uh, had the opportunity to play with the beverage and the loop and do A-B comparisons, and the beverage always wins. But the loop comes surprisingly close on some conditions, on some frequencies.
but I don't have a noise problem. Guys that are buying the loops are buying them because they have noise problems within their local, yeah, in, yeah, in their inner kind of confines of their subdivision. So you get the kit for 400 bucks. You can wind your own too, but knock yourself out. It's a, there's a lot of development that goes into it to get it right. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, you can hear the air, aircraft beacons, and what's really neat is in the middle of winter, I can hear BBC World Service on 198 kilohertz from up, up in the mountains. Uh, not, not often, but I hear the European broadcasters down there on the uh, uh, below 150, 153 to 2, 230, 240 kilohertz, somewhere in that range. Eleven hundred. Used three W E, right? Cleveland. two different stations, I think. Yeah, that's two different stations. That's off the back to the southwest. And that's toward Cleveland. Boston. That doesn't sound like WBZ. I don't know what that is. 1020 is Pittsburgh. It's still too early. If I listen to the little uh, peanut whistle up out of Cleveland, 1350. Night, they're not running much power. Off the front, hardly anything. There they are, one aimed at them. How do you know if your man loves you? Well, the answers are in this next song by Betty Everett. There's the. Yep. Rig has two, yeah, two coax inputs. No, I'm coming out of that, that four-way splitter, and one's going into antenna one, one's going into antenna two, and I'm using HRD just to switch within the radio between the two. So there's no external switching going on here at all. Yep. Different, different ends, yep. or different side, yeah, actually different, yeah, different ends, really. So it's exactly the same antenna. One time. <laughs> yeah, don't transmit into this antenna. <laughs> uh, at home, I have a uh, full-size 160-meter dipole, 70 feet up, and a full-size 80-meter dipole, about 70 feet. Mm. Have you shot this radio? If you're listening, I'm just talking you. If you're working far station on this radio, pick them up, if you're transmitting on the radio, do you have to shut this for how do you keep the power out of the radio? There, there is some diode protection built into the switch box for really severe overloads. Uh, I think Jeff did the math, and you'd really have to have your transmit antenna right on top of the thing and running a full legal limit to get anywhere close to causing a problem. Uh, th in my case, the receive antenna is maybe 500 feet from the transmit antenna. Yes, sir?
Yeah, that would go on the output of the switch box between the switch box and the rig to, to eliminate that kind of problem. Yeah, they make some good stuff. Yes, sir. No, there, there really is no resonant frequency. If you, uh, if you take like an MFJ analyzer and connect it to one end and sweep it, it's a constant. The SWR is basically constant from below the broadcast band up to 20, 30 megs. It's not really resonant. Length and a lot of it, you know, a lot of the the performance of the beverage depends on the the, the arrival angle from the, uh, you know, from where it's coming from. I I think the length and uh, and the height above ground would affect it s somewhat, but I really haven't I really haven't done the modeling to look at different configurations. Highest absolute gain, the beverage. Yeah, I think so. Let's let's uh, let's take a look. Let's see if we go back to that slide. Uh, outer ring is uh, minus eleven on the beverage. We we'll use 160 meters for reference, minus 11, minus 4 for 80. This guy is outer ring the bog beverage on ground, minus 21, so about 10 dB worse. The EWE is minus 24, and the flag is a minus, almost a minus 30. So yeah, the beverage is obviously the most efficient. Any other questions? Get to your net, right? Does EWE stand for something? Pardon? Does EWE stand for something? Uh, yes, but I'm not sure what. EWE, uh, I, I read the literature on it, and it was a, a Scotsman, I think, that developed the original antenna, and it was, <laughs> I'm not sure it had something to do with sheep or not, but, <laughs> but, uh, uh, all right, what was that frequency? 40? 47.55. 40, 4, Alpha Lima. This is Alpha Foxtrot Alpha 4, Bravo Tango. I relay Alpha Foxtrot Alpha 4, Whiskey Juliet, Satellite Beach, Florida, Point Calling. Nothing heard from Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands, over. AFA 4 DT, this is AFA 4 AL, Roger by relay Alpha Foxtrot Alpha 4, Whiskey Juliet, Satellite Beach, Florida, voice only. Now, Florida's kind of off the side of this particular antenna. For Alpha Lima. This is Alpha Fox Trot, Delta Force, back on November. Fox, 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 Foxtrot Alpha 4, Foxtrot Charlie, Alpha Charlie. 
Is that the guy in Florida? Here at Echo Mike 1, this is Alpha Foxtrot Echo 4 Tango November. Are there relays for stations in Tennessee? Over. This is AFE 4 TM. Nothing heard. Out. to tell with all the static tonight. Okay, anything else before I shut this down? Yep. 1575. Who's that? Uh, I wouldn't give it much hope, but we'll try it. Between, between 1570 and 1580. If we put it on CW and we hear it, we should hear a beat note. I'm not hearing it. Yeah, I do. Hear it in there? That's it. <laughs> Turn to the west, I don't hear it. Yeah. It's way down there. <laughs> right. Anything else? I'm going to shut this thing off. Thank you, sir. Yeah. And if I can shut it off. It's always good to hear the radio shut off when you're not home. There it went. Just a second. Let me get this thing. Okay. Yep. Uh, I've got a computer connected to the radio, and that that computer is running HRD as a client. So it's always listening and uh, for a remote with password protection and all that stuff. It took a while to get it set up, but it works. And then Skype. You set Skype up, Skype up so it auto answers on the far end, and uh, just have it. I've actually done that with the 870 and used push to talk. You know, not with the beverage antenna, but hooked it up to the other antenna and just used HRD and used Skype simply as the audio pass to get in and out of the radio. Works fine. So you can do a poor man's remote. Yeah, I mean, 
I never feel comfortable doing it unless somebody's home because, you know, there's no dead man timer or anything. And it's just, I don't feel comfortable doing it. If I can't call my wife and say, get down and push the button. <laughs> anything else? Have a look at all the literature. Uh, if you have any questions of me, you, you forget where to go, my call sign, wc4x at awrl.net will get to me via email. Be glad to answer any questions you might have. Thanks for your time and attention. Thank you,